Good evening, everyone. Magandang gabi po sa lahat ng ating mga viewers tonight. So, welcome to MedMom Wednesday Webinars. I'm your host. I'm Dr. Tipi Tenchanko, a developmental pediatrician and the director of MedMom Institute for Human Development. So, our webinars, our Wednesday webinars, are a way of reaching out to you and delivering timely and relevant topics in child development from our experts. So, yung pong webinar natin tonight, part two po ito. So, I'm sure marami po yung mga attendees natin from last week's webinar. Nandito po para sa part two ng ating teaching reading to children with special needs. So, let me introduce po, i-welcome ulit po natin ngayon ang ating mga experts for tonight. So, simulan ko po by introducing our reading specialist. So teacher Glenda Garcia is a reading interventionist working with children and adolescents with special needs who exhibit challenges in literacy. So she believes that reading should be accessible to all. So good evening, teacher Glenda. Good evening, Doc. Good evening to everyone who's here. Yan, excited ako kung ano yung mga tips and strategies na i-share mo ngayong gabi. Medyo bitin kasi yung last week natin, di ba? Ayan, sige. And pakilala ko po yung isa pang part ng ating panel, ang ating suki na bumabalik po ulit. So, si teacher Kat Ambayek is a speech and language therapist. She works primarily with kids. And she believes that exploring leads to learning. And gaya po nung sinabi natin last week, reading is another way of exploring. So, sabi ni teacher Kat, explore with your kids and learn with your kids today. Good evening, teacher Kat. Hi, Dr. P. Hi, Teach. Hi, everyone. Good evening. Ayan, good evening. So alam niyo, Teacher Ka, Teacher Glenda, ang viewers natin from all over, nakakatawa, both local, Luzon, Visayas, Mindanao, may nakinig sa atin last week. Nakita niyo naman yung sa chat box, di ba? Yes. And, and dami, pati yung tanong nila. Tapos, meron din from overseas, from Abu Dhabi, from Malaysia. Ang dami nating, um, ang dami tayong viewers from all over. Okay, so I'm sure excited po kayong lahat. Don't forget po, paalala lang siguro, if you have questions, type in your questions sa chat box po sa FB. Or if you're joining us in Zoom, you can press on Q&A. Pwede po kayo dun mag-type or sa chat din po, pwede rin po kayo mag-type. And for those of you who will need certificates, para pong last week, ha, meron lang po tayong window kung kailan available yung certificates natin. So our certificate Certificates, makikita nyo po dyan sa FB yung link. I-click nyo lang po. Available po yung certificates from 8 to 8.30 tonight. Tonight lang po available yung certificates natin. Okay. Start na tayo, Teacher Glenn. Excited na ako. Yes. Okay. So, last time, dito tayo nag-end, no? Doon sa ating common challenges. Yung mga nakikita natin madalas sa ating children with special needs in relation to reading. Whether doon sa decoding o doon sa understanding nila. Uh, tinackle natin last time yung first three, actually. And uh, today, we'll try to target yung uh, other challenges in the next few slides. Okay? Um, siguro pwede lang natin simulan uh, by going back to some few questions para hindi natin maiwan yung para sa oral language. Okay, so, um, teacher Kat, mayroong nagtanong dito, um, I have a four-year-old student who has autism. He's very good at labeling and sight reading words, but when it comes to his needs and wants, he can't use his words. Instead, he uses gestures, like pulling adults. So, ano yung strategies na pwede doon? Well, uh, it's reading. His ability to read is a sign that he will be able to um, look at the picture, look at the sign, and identify that. I'm wondering if he may have uh, trouble with retrieval, meaning if there's no visual cue, then he will not be able to recall or remember. That's why he's not as spontaneous when he's communicating with you. So, one of our choices here, I guess, or what I can recommend is introducing pictures, your PEC system, your Poloco, your AAC devices or AAC um, to help him out with this because he needs to be able to retrieve those words. 
and be able to communicate with you because the problem is not the words itself because he can read i wonder did he say anything about comprehension and he can comprehend what he reads well, no. I, well, I, so, so that is something also that we would like to check to see if we can comprehend what he's reading so if and that one and this yeah using text for him that would be that was teach me a couple of questions asking about how to uh, or how to our recommendations on developing uh, skills for kids with apraxia and articulation problems. Okay. For apraxia, because apraxia is a motor skill um, difficulty. So what I usually recommend for that is like you start with a sound that the child can produce and then you practice that repeatedly in all in different contexts or with different um, different words containing that sound. So that if you're targeting, for example, if you're targeting letter M, so collect all the items with the initial M words and then present that to the child so that he can mass practice it. Until such time that he will be, well, you know, hindi na kailangan pag-isipan. Pag pinakita mo sa kanya, mapupudus na kaagad, hindi na nahihirapan because of your mass practice because it's muscle memory. So you really need to do the practice, but you need to be targeted as well. So it's hard for you to um, introduce different sounds or systems every time you try to target, every time you try to tra target the abraxia. Okay, yeah. all right, so yeah. Thank you, Teach. So um, we can okay. proceed to these reading profiles. So based doon sa mga nakita natin, uh, common challenges, we typically see three kinds of profiles among children. So yung unang profile, these are the kids who have difficulty in the mechanical component. Mechanics, ibig sabihin yung dealing with print. Yung, dito yung letter knowledge and phonics. And even word recognition. Yung second profile naman natin ng kids ay yung mga nakihirapan with the meaning component. So ito yung comprehension part. The last kind of profile among kids is the one wherein my difficulty in both. Okay, so so profile one typically ito yung ating may mga specific learning disabilities or dyslexia. Pwede rin yung may mga um, ADHD because of their characteristics. They hirapan sila with um, decoding in terms of uh, there's factors like their memory and attention. So, those naman na nasa profile 2, sila yung kids natin typically na may uh, autism and ID. Yeah. So, profile 3 can be... Linda, anong ID? Oh, intellectual disability. Yeah. So, so profile 3 of uh, kids who exhibit both kinds of difficulties. Okay, so pwede na one or two or both components siya nakihirapan. So with those in mind, let's take a look at some of the things that we can do to develop reading in both components. Okay, uh, disclaimer lang, uh, since this is a one-hour session, we won't be able to tackle everything. But we'll try our best to address, especially those uh, concerns that were raised last week. So, you and then yung ating gusto ng prioritize. Uh, when we talk about reading, this is these areas are what is considered to be crucial: phonemic awareness, phonics, fluency, comprehension, and vocabulary. So we'll go through them one by one. No, uh, my question last week asking if adolescents can't still read what would be the best options for them and teacher glance add ko lang ha, kasi may lumabas din na question yan what about an eight year old daw na hindi rin nagbabasa pa okay so no matter what the age of the person is um i would still refer teachers parents to these areas for reading 
So it's not like my is a skip, but let's look at these as um, the things that we need to target, whatever their age might be. Yun. So kahit na adolescent, okay lang, turuan pa rin. Diba? And kahit na mag-start sa letters, sa so sounds, not a problem. Um, okay, so let's talk about the first one. So the first one is what we call phonological awareness. Kanina phonemic. I'll show you later ano yung difference nila. But in any case, there's no need naman to memorize these terms. What we need to remember is this component uh, delves with sensitivity with sounds. Okay? So, it's the understanding na yung naririnig nila, itong mga sinasabi ko, can be broken down into parts, such as words, and those words can be broken down into uh, smaller units of sounds. Okay? So, phonological awareness, specifically phonemic awareness, is considered crucial in word reading and spelling. So, kanina, sabi ko, mula doon sa si, binabanggit natin sentence, o, uh, yeah, doon sa binabanggit natin sentence, kailangan maging aware yung bata na may components yun. Okay? And that's why we teach identification of rhymes, um, production of rhymes as um, one or actually yung unang tinuturo dito sa ating sequence ng phonological awareness kasi kailangan nilang ma-realize ang unit ng isang salita. Okay? Uh, may ibang kids na hihirapan pa to identify rhymes. So, minsan, uh, they still need to be taught word discrimination. So, kailangan nilang maintindihan na magkaiba yung tunog ng cat at car. Halimbawa. Okay. So, dito sa sequence natin, makikita nyo na yung sa pinakailalim ay phonemes. This is the smallest unit of sound. Ito yung t. Ito yung ch. Ito yung kailangan nilang matutunan. Sensitivity to this one. So, for phonemes, we can do, um, different activities can be done. So, you can blend phonemes. Ibig sabihin yung pagsama-sama ng tunog sa isang salita. Uh, dito rin papasok yung identifying ending, beginning, and middle sounds. Tapos, dito rin papasok yung pag-count ng sounds sa isang salita. Saka, pinakamahirap siguro yung pag-manipulate ng phonemes. Yung, uh, okay, sa salitang cat, dagdagan mo nga ng s sa dulo ng cat. Yun ay adding. Tapos, pwede rin uh, ang deletion or pagtanggal ng sound. So, sabihin mo yung cat ng walang k. Ayan. Tapos, isa pa yung substitution. Yun yung pagpapalip ng mga tunog sa isang salita. Halimbawa, sabihin mo yung cat, pero ngayon, baguhin mo yung k ng b. Yun. Yun yung mga, ibang, yun yung mga activities natin for phonemes. Um, but remember, bago tayo makarating dito, kailangan nating magsimula sa larger units. Which is no words natin, yung syllables, at saka yung onset and rhymes. Onset and rhymes, ito yung uh, beginning and ending ng word. Okay? So halimbawa, uh, bat. Yung b, yung onset, yung at, yung rhyme natin. Yun. So, kasi... Bakit kailangan mula sa malaki papunta sa maliit? Kasi po, uh, pinaka-difficult marinig naman talaga yung smallest unit of sound. So we have to begin from the larger units to the smallest units. Dito, hindi pa natin kailangan ipakita yung mga letra. Puro tunog pa lang. Puro tunog pa lang yung... Uh, kailangan i-expose sa kids. So, pwede may manipulatives para tulungan silang i-represent yung sounds. But no uh, forms needed. Yung forms, papasok po yan sa 
Phoenix. Okay? Papasok yun sa Phoenix natin. Dito papasok yung ating pagtuturo ng letters and pagtuturo ng mga salita. Okay? So, dito sa Phoenix, this is our instruction of how letters and combination of letters uh, are represented and how these sounds are blended together to make words. Okay. So, gaya ng sinabi ko, dito papasok yung pagtituro ng letters hanggang sa um, mahahabang salita. Pagbasa ng mahahabang salita. So, sa Filipino, ganito siya. Mula tunog ng letra hanggang sa pagbasa ng parirala, kataga, at detalye. Pagdating naman sa English, ito po. So, we have your letters, letter recognition, hanggang, ako na po, ah, hindi, hindi naman po tol, hanggang sa pagbasa ng multisyllabic words. Okay? So, ito po yung recommended, uh, well, it's one of the recommended sequences of, of teaching uh, word patterns. Yung sa iba naman kasi, nagtuturo na ng syllables early on. Pero depende yun sa ating kid naman. Sa ating mga students. Okay? So, what do we need to remember for phonics? Uh, to decode an unknown word, an unfamiliar word, a child must be able to identify the correct phonemes. Yung tamang tunog sa bawat letra. Tapos, alam, pagkatapos niya malaman yung tunog, tunog niya ang bawat letra, kailangan niya ma-hold together all those sounds in his memory para ma-blending sounds together to make a word. Yun. So, blending yung skill na pinaka-importante for decoding. So, papasadahan ko lang to This is letter recognition. Ito yung names, uh, pagkaalam ng names na ang, ng mga letter forms natin. Um, next one, more importantly, yung letter sound correspondence, yung tunog. So, kita nyo, may apple, doon siya sa ah. Ball, ball, doon siya sa b. At camera, doon siya sa k. So, yan yung letter sound correspondence. Ito yung onset and rhyme na nadabanggit ko kanina. At ito yung isang sample activity para uh, sa pagtuturo ng onset and rhyme for decoding. Okay. And Dr. Glenda, I have a question lang. Kasi di ba parang sinabi mo, um, meron, yan nga, yung mga onset and rhyme or kailangan ma-identify na nila yung letter sounds. Kung halimbawa, maaga pa lang na-introduce yung reading sa bata, meron bang age na kailangan kaya na nilang gawin to? Meron ba tayong age na, o oh, pag beyond this, hindi pa nila nagagawa, uy, red flag na yan. Kailangan mm -hmm. nang i-investigate. Typically, preschoolers hanggang kindergarten, uh, foundational literacy ang, or early literacy skills ang tinuturo. So, hopefully, at least by the end of kindergarten, alam na nila yung kanilang mga letter, um, letters and letter sounds. Ganon din yung sinabi ni Teacher Kat, I think, before. Teach, yung sinasabi mong seven years old. Oh, well, in terms of seven years old, they should have all of their sounds in. Not necessarily recognizing the, the letters teach, but they should have all of the let. When they produce the sound, they have the, the capacity to produce it correctly. Because it's also developmental in terms of production. Yeah. So, teacher Kat, so if let's say the child is not hitting the reading milestones na sinabi ni Teacher Glenda, would there be benefit to starting or having a speech therapy evaluation? There will be because we want to be able to discriminate or to find out if there is a letter or sound discrimination difficulty or if it is, if it is related to the production or is it um, related to sometimes because they have it then doc when the way that they got used to the words but like the child cannot produce it in this word but he can this sound like but in this word but in all the other words he can produce or in, in mm -hmm. some issues. The important here is, the thing here is to identify what sounds he can produce and cannot produce 
and then those sounds also that we can produce consistently or inconsistently. If we can identify those, then we will be able to make sound judgment with regards to his ability to identify or to match sound and letter. Okay, yeah. thank you. One. Okay, so susunod after no um, onset and rhyme. Dito kasi sa onset and rhyme, uh, pagsasamahin pa lang nila yung g at a. Yun. So, pwedeng uh, for some for some kids, it may be necessary na ituro ang onset and rhyme. For others naman, I've seen na dumederecho na to decoding um, three-letter words. Na uh, ang pag-hold ay uh, mauuna yung b oh, instead na g and up. So, ang importante sa ating decoding nga, gaya nung nasabi ko, ay yung uh, pag-put together ng sounds. Di ba? Uh, ang iba kong madadagdag dito, siguro, for our phonics, is that it's important to um, to tap the different senses to make it multisensory. So, nakikita nila yung letra, naririnig na yung tunog, tapos alam din nila kung paano formahin. So, halimbawa, B, B, or B, Bug, B. Ganoon. Tapos, uh, makakatulong din kasi ito para dun sa reversals. Kasi may nagtanong last time tungkol dun mm -hmm. sa mga baliktad ng uh, B at D, possibly, ano pa ba yung madalas? P at Q. Yeah. Yun. So, uh, kailangan makita nila yung connection na kapag sinabi nila yung B, ito yun. Yeah. So, pag nakita nila yon sa print, ang pwede nilang gawin kung nalilito pa sila, i-trace nila, kopyahin nila. Um, that, should, um, that should activate their memory kung ano yung tunog nyo. Kasi when you teach it, uh, tapping uh, the different senses. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think so parang the more senses that you use, mas malaki yung chances na may matututo yung bata. Ganun ba yun, teacher Glenda? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Kasi you're activating uh, the visual, um, the auditory, and the um, kinesthetic. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yun. So, uh, kung nakalimutan mo yung sagot, trace yung ganun, pwedeng bumalik sa kanyang memory kasi. Mm -hmm. Yun. Ang isa ko pang nakita yung helpful uh, sa pagtuturo ng letters ay kapag nakakalimot. Nambawa, okay, pinakita mo ng salita. Um, ay, nakalimutan niya yung tunog ng letrang G. Uh, it has been very helpful for me to use keywords. So, di ba, kapag may alphabet chart tayo, may, let, may pictures doon, di ba? Like yung A, may apple. So, instead of giving them the sound, kapag nakalimutan nila, I think it's good um, for them to, or for you, the teacher or the parent, to give them the keyword, yung apple. Ano yung unang tunog na nasa apple? Yung A. Ah. So, uh, you will present the picture of an apple? Pwede rin. Yeah. Pwede, rin, or, pwede rin apple. As in, pag narinig nila, ano yung unang tunog na narinig mo sa apple? Ah. Yun. Okay. Uh, so helpful na kung magtuturo tayo ng letters, may keywords. Mm -hmm. uh, so, parang fun, no? Parang pwede palang i-game siya. Pwede siyang gawing game yeah. na ma-enjoy ng bata. Yes. Um... Uh, for these, especially for phonemic awareness, na puro tunog, na puro tunog tapos for letters, um, maganda na game-based pa siya, play-based pa siya. Kasi itong mga to ay foundations for formal um, reading skills pa naman. Mm -hmm. Tapos, okay, may nagtanong kasi last time, um, mm -hmm. anong best strategy to teach an ID child, so an, a child with intellectual disability with poor working memory and visual perception skills. So read. Okay, so um, poor working memory. So 
ang magiging itsura nito, halimbawa, itong makikita nyo dito, bug. Pag book of g, and then tanungin mo siya kung ano yun, pwedeng nakalimutan na niya yung isang tunog. Mm-mm. Hindi niya talaga maritain. So what can be helpful is for or is to ask the child to put together two sounds first, like b, a, ba. Okay, so supposedly yung ba na yun, isa na lang yun. Kaya isa na lang tatandaan niya. Tapos sa kaidagdag yung g. Okay, ba, g. So two units lang. Ganun din to para, kapag, para sa mga words na mas mahahaba na. Like, idugtong ng idugtong ng idugtong hanggang sa nagiging isang unit siya. So, wag yung, or pwede natin iwasan yung mahaba. For example, ano ba yung mahabang word na pwede idugtong? Mansan. Ano yun? <laughs> so, mansa. Bansa. Okay. So, book, a, mts, a. Ang haba, di ba? Pagdating niya sa a, kalimutan na niya yun. <laughs> So, pwedeng uh, b, a, ba, b. Okay. So, may ba na siya. Ba, n, ban. Pagkatapos, s, ban, s. Para pagdating niya sa a, isang unit na lang dapat yung bans. Yun na lang yung tatandaan niya. Para two units lang. Ganon. Um, for the visual perception skills, the multisensory strategy, strategy should be of help to us already. Okay. Yan. Um, may isa pang tanong. Oh, for work, uh, for memory also, um, last na. Last na. Um, it's also helpful for those with, uh, who struggle with memory issues, you all compounding. So, ibig sabihin, kahit na naturo ko na yung B ngayon, bukas, pag naturo ko ng bagong salita, ay, ng bagong letra, gagawin pa rin namin or re-review pa rin namin yung book. Ganun mm-hmm. din for words. Kahit na magtuturo na ako ng ch na words, uh, tatandaan pa rin or i-review nyo pa rin yung mga salitang CVC. Kasi CVC dapat yung before ng digraphs, for instance. Hanggang sa kung baga bit-bit, bit-bit nyo yan. Kahit na may bago. Kaya compounding. Yun. Teacher Glenda, I have a question. So, halimbawa, kailangan ba 100% mastery bago ka mag-move on to the next topic? Like, may percentage ba yan bago mag-decide na, o sige, pwede ko na ituro yung susunod? Uh, sa letra ba, Dok? Sa words? Oh. So, halimbawa, bago ka pumunta sa digraph, kailangan ba lahat ng sounds ay kaya na niyang gawing letter sounds? Okay, hopefully, by the time na nag-digraphs ka, alam na, niya, alam na niya yung mga letter sounds. But there's a possibility nga na makalimutan niya yung mga letter sounds na yon. So, yung helpful nga is to still review the letter sounds at the start of your classes. So, para siyang habit, before we start reading new words, eto muna. Plus, um... Halimbawa, sa digraphs, CH pa lang ang tinuturo niyo, tapos ang alam pa lang nila ay short vowels, huwag munang mag-i-include ng other words na hindi pa natatackle. You want to. I have a suggestion also for the working memory. Um, you mentioned you should always review, right? And one way to do this is that if you're working on one or two words, kasi I think you can introduce like three sounds at a time or three words at a time to practice on. You can always include your mastered words, just like you have a stock of mastered words, and you can pick from them, and then you will include your your the words that you're targeting. So at the para at least nag nagkakaroon ng transition between known and unknown mm-hmm. will be helpful mm-hmm. for the child for him to be able to transition. Because it's hard to all unknown words at all at the same mm-hmm. time. It, it may problema siya with memory. So we have to think about that. So we have to include mastered words para ang distractor mo or your transition will be a known word and then you put back the unknown word that you're practicing up with. And yeah. then that's how you that's how you try to rotate the, the labels. So kung i- ku- contextualize natin siya doon sa example natin na, for example, digraphs nga na CH, SH words, 
So, nagtuturo ka ng bagong words sa CH and then meron kang CV, CVC words na familiar and unfamiliar. Yun yung in-explain the teacher that. So, may, may word bank kang ganun. So, so, teacher Glenda, may tanong tayo sa chat box, no? Galing kay Miss Katrina. Pwede pa bang maitama ang isang 10-year-old pupil na yung phonologic awareness niya, parang hirap pa rin siya i-produce yung mga sounds. Pero 10 years old na raw tong student ni Miss Katrina. Ako, I, I will never say no. <laughs> na, never say never. Habang may buhay. <laughs> yes. Yun, yun yung short, ano ko. Yes, teacher Kat. Teacher Kat. Yes. Think about, the, you're talking about the ability for the child to produce it correctly, but he can, dis can he discriminate? Like if you say ba across a and g, will he be able to discriminate the ba and point to the ba correctly? Because if that is the case, that there's no problem with the hearing. It's, I mm. think it's fun that needs to be looked at. And if it's the production, then it's articulation. So there may be an articulation problem. So it may be processing. He can recognize the sound or he can recognize the letter, but he cannot produce it correctly. So that may be the issue. That yeah. for that right. Case. So siguro, siguro for this case, kailangan investigate pa, no? Further yeah. investigate. Uh, mm -hmm. Kasi para ma, ma, ma kuha talaga yung dahilan or yung root cause kung bakit nahihirapan yeah. yung bata. Yes. yes. And, uh, ideally, he should have all of his sounds in and there shouldn't be any articulation problem for that. Okay. So, also speaking of investigation, kung babalikan natin yung sequence ng phonological awareness kanina, marami siya. So, okay. pwedeng nahihirapan siya dun sa smallest sound. So, baka pwedeng iakyat mo muna. Baka pwedeng mag-syllables muna kayo. Pwedeng mag count mag words muna kayo. Dun muna. Kasi nga yung yung phonemes na yun mahirap na yun. So, yon. Baka try to, you know, go oh. back muna dun sa prerequisites. Okay. All right. So for so we've talked about um, decoding. So uh, and kaya nakit siguro nakita niyo yung relationship ng uh, phonological awareness, yung blending sounds even without looking at at the word. Kasi kung nagbablend nilang sounds even without these letters, then that could help them in decoding. Now, para sa inyo, bakit tayo nagka-count ng sounds doon sa ating, di ba, kapag preschool, usually, pinagka-count sila ng sounds, identify beginning, ending, all those, uh, all those things come into play when they do decoding and encoding. Especially for spelling, um, doon sa mga nahihirapan mag-spell, one of our strategies is really for them to count the sounds that they hear. And that's mm -hmm. only possible if they've done that, even without the spelling task. Like, yung napag-usapan pa lang natin kanina. So, diba? Bug. Okay. Ilan yung tunog na narinig mo? B. Ah. Uh, G. Okay. Unang tunog, B. Okay. Sulat mo, B. Ah. Uh, sulat mo, ah. Uh, G. Sulat mo, G. So, yun. So, parang pinapadali natin instead na bug yung sa spell niya, iniisa-isa ini natin through segmenting. Yun. So, that's for decodable words. Now, we have yung tinatawag nating sight words. Ito yung, and ang daming nagtanong yata last time about sight word reading. Kasi mm -hmm. parang ang daming kids na nakakapag-memorize. May nagtanong na um, okay daw ba yun na parang minimemorize lang nung bata yung words. Yes. Uh, Sir Glenn's tamang-tama sa chat box natin. Parang, how should reading be taught a 19-year-old with apraxia? The child can sight read. So, nagsasight read na siya ng familiar words. Pero, comprehension niya, dun yata may difficulty at saka unintelligible pa yung speech niya. Uh, so, I think teacher Kat can talk about the articulation. But I, I would uh, go back to the ability to blend sounds. Mm -hmm. um, the sight word reading is good, but in tackling unfamiliar words, um, it's, the, it's your blending skill that will help you. Now, so baka nagkakamali ba dahil sa articulation? Yun, uh, I think Teacher Kat also mentioned 
something earlier? Yeah, with regards to apraksha, it's really, you have to practice the sounds and you have to start with the sounds that the child can produce readily. You have to start from there in terms of putting it together with the words that he can produce already so that it will be more functional. And then for the other sounds that he's having trouble with, let's try to explore other sounds in single, in isolation. I would call it in isolation and then you put them together just like much like what you do in reading. Although with this one, we're doing it verbal. I'm not attaching it into words, although it might be helpful if um, to give that um, visual cue, but he, he's sight reading, he's not phonetic reading. So that might not be helpful for him. But if you isolate the sounds, you isolate and then you put them together and then associate that with a word that he uses frequently, I think it will help. And also again, targeted. Um, if, it, if it's the ba, you start, I start with most of my kids with the first two sounds. Like if it's ball, bat, like ba, oh, okay, let's do this. Bat, yeah. ma, um, bat, back, um, ba, bas. I don't know. I'm not very concerned with the oh. phonemic terms of it. I just want it to be functional. So there will be a bat, there will be a bus. Kahit na bus yan, it will be bass for me. Kasi, it sounds the same. I'm okay with that if you can do that correctly, right? So, all ba, and then may changing ka lang sa, sa dulo. The important is he can produce the first, the first two sounds. Kasi final sounds are really difficult to produce. It's hard. So, I won't even target that. But so long as it's recognizable. And then later on, you, when you have the isolated T sound, then you can put that in, back. And then if you're targeting T, then it's going to be bat, mat, sat. So that's para practicing the final T sound. And then you're presenting pictures. And then you'll try to apply it in whatever area. So for generalization. Okay. So we hope that was addressed. Okay, so so sight words. Maraming nagtanong kasi yun nga, I was saying, as I was saying. Madaming kids daw na ang bilis maka-memorize ng words and they were concerned na minememorize lang yung words. And actually, it's a good thing that they're able to memorize it quickly. So that means nasa long-term memory na nila yun. And they only need to have their decoding skills um, ready or in use for unfamiliar words. Yun. So... Um, that's not a bad. That's not that. that that's, that's not necessarily a bad thing if they're able to memorize the words already. Um, it's a different thing if they don't know the meaning of those mm -hmm. words. Okay, so um, this one, what you can see, uh, this was taken from actually from one of our uh, teachers' um, Zoom sessions, teaching sight words. Ayan. So, binura ko lang yung <laughs> picture ng teacher and kid sa side, no? So, um, this is an activity teaching the kid to recognize the. So, sight words are actually quite difficult. Yung, in essence, um, what we know of sight words. Kasi, these are words that you can frequently see in texts. But, a lot of them don't follow rules. That's why... They're not decodable. So this one, you cannot say this as te, di ba? So they need to learn na this one, you produce or you read this as the already. Mm -hmm. um, what you're seeing is already a practice activity. Okay? So because when we teach sight words, we want to show the word first. We want to give the letters of the word, how it's used in a sentence, and possibly even underline the weird part of the word. Para alam na lang, oh, hindi to sumusunod sa rule. So in this case, ano ang hindi sumasagot? Ay, sumusunod sa sounds. Yung letter E. Diba? So that can be highlighted to the kid. Para din alam niya na this one doesn't follow what you know. Okay? Yeah. So... And give lots of opportunities for practice. I have kids naman din na sa sight words sila herap. Very good sila sa decoding, but their memory um, makes it difficult for them to read sight words or to retrieve 
kahit na nabasa nila ng tinuro, after a while, nakalim- nakakalimutan. Yun. Okay. So, Mr. Glenda, balikan ko lang. Ha. You said, ito sample to ng isang parang online session. Yes. So, pwede palang effective pa rin na kahit ngayong naka-lockdown tayo, effective pa rin yung mga online sessions. Meron pa rin matututunan yung mga bata. Yes. Um, I've, I've read somewhere na um, good quality teaching or good teaching doesn't change naman whether you're in a classroom or in this kind of setup. So your principles, your strategies are the same. It's really the manner of how you present it lang. But your teaching, your your ability to teach is there. Yeah. Okay. So that is for our um uh phonics. Ito, this one for fluency. Medyo mas maikini naman siya kaysa sa ating phonics. Um, and it's typically, the not typically, it's um, what we can consider as the bridge between phonics and comprehension. So, uh, sometimes sasabihin sa atin, ah, oh, nakakabasa naman siya, pero hindi nakakaintindi. So, one of the things we can look out for is how fluent the reading is. Kasi baka labored naman yung reading niya. So baka for instance, nagbabasa ng ano ba sa um, kalabasa. Baka pag binasa niya yung salitang kalabasa, it's like kalabasa. Okay, so nabasa niya, pero hindi siya fluent. And, and if a kid reads like that sa lahat ng words, wala pang meaning din. Mahihirapan siya to create meaning. Uh, yeah, so when we talk about fluency, it's... Um, Accuracy, speed, and appropriate expression. And we don't necessarily have to work on all things at the same time. You can focus on one thing at a time. So you can focus on accuracy and speed. For instance, so for example, um, you have, you're going to ask the kid to read a decodable text, na puro CVC words, you can prepare the words in advance already. That goes for sight words that are present in the text. Okay, that's for accuracy and speed. Um, it's also important to get them used to reading phrases and uh, sentences. So actually, dito papasok yung um, exposure nila to oral language, to listening to books, kasi familiar sila kung ano yung tunog. Grammar the, the structure of it, yeah. Yes, yeah. Alam nila, you and I, pwede mo siya masaya na you and I, na ganun kabilis, di ba? Yung ganun ka natural. Okay, so, yeah. Um, next one, expression. So, expression is how we read words with, or texts with feelings. So, what you can do here is to highlight parts of the text, like the punctuation marks. So, dapat kapag naka-exclamation or question mark, kailangan tataas yung boses. Sample naman, Teacher Glenda. Yeah. <laughs> Or si Teacher Glenda magsasample for us. <laughs> okay. Um, example na, uh, okay. Yung number one, Teacher Kat. Please let me go. Ayun. <laughs> <laughs> and then oh lurky lurky the sky is falling <laughs> so we, yeah we need uh, we also need to highlight yung mga quotation marks para alam ng kid na kapag may quotation mark may taong nagsasalita so yeah may feelings involved doon okay so Hmm. Okay, this one I think is one of the most important things in teaching fluency. And this is on phrasing. Yung pagchachunk. Yeah, so you have one sentence. Um, it's either one word at a time, magbasa yung kid, or tuloy-tuloy siya. And it's difficult to construct meaning kapag ganun. Kapag hindi niya nakikita na once upon a time, okay, yon I will tell us time. Diba? Will tell us the setting. A little boy that will tell us a person went to fly 
that will tell us in action. So it's important na na mm. to chunk niya yun. Um, and you need to teach this first. So we don't expect naman the kids to be able to chunk right away. So it's something that you need to model. Yeah, that's for fluency. And... This is a balik lang ko lang ah, sorry. Meron lang comment sa chat box kasi so sabi na what are some things or materials that we teachers can make like DIY which can be of use to help children to read. So yung mga examples mo ano ba yan? Pwede bang gumawa ng ganyan ng mga teachers or meron bang saan makukuha yung mga ganyan? Yes. Um uh for word reading uh kanina nagpakita ko nung mga screenshots nung mga sample exercises. So, for example, you can make letter cards. Puhuna mo na yung letter cards. Kasi, <laughs> you can make so many things from the letter cards. Diba? Um, tapos, pwede din kayong gumawa ng spelling board. Spelling board na um, for, in for instance, uh, may cardboard ka tapos nalagyan mo ng plastic plastic kung saan pwede mo, pag nag-spell si, ba, si kid, uh, ng bata, uh, for example, bug, again, b, okay, hahanapin niya yung letter card, isusuksok niya doon. Hmm. Tapos, next letter, suksok. Yun. Ganon. Um, kung makita niyo rin yung, for example, yung strip of paper, tapos bubutasan niyo, so, uh, yung katulad nung sinabi ng t-shirt cat, for example, t lang, yung kinatarget, strip of paper na may letter T lang. Tapos, um, meron kang another vertical strip of paper na hinahatak mo. Yung, para, para ba napapalitan yung first part? Mm. Um, ano pa ba? Oh, meron din akong folders. Folders. Tapos, may, may letters for CVC. Tapos, you just need to flip. Flip books. Mm -hmm. So, magpapalit ka ng letter, pero parang you can change the letters. Mm -hmm. flip. You on. Okay. okay. So, um, vocabulary and comprehension. This is our last part. And we're not going to deal much on vocabulary kasi marami na tayong natakal dyan last week. Okay, I want to focus on comprehension, if that's okay. Okay. So, um, there are two things I want to mention about in teaching comprehension. First is you're exp is exposing the kids to books. We have emphasized this last week also. And the books need to be appropriate with them or with their level. Uh, we also need to build on their background or connect to their background knowledge. So, Hopefully, we choose books that are um, that talk about familiar experiences. Okay, and then the thing aloud, I'll talk about it in our last slide. Yay! Yes, this is our last. Oh, second to the last slide, but actually, punung punuto. Okay, so a lot of a lot of our audience last time talked about as or asked about how to teach comprehension. So, I want to start with uh, uh, quickly with an analogy para alam na, para mayroon tayong um, um, understanding of how comprehension or reading works. Uh, we've learned last time and daming factors. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, and when we read, when we try to comprehend, there's so many things that are happening. So, for example, yung analogy ko is when we start or when we learn to drive, for example. Diba? Kapag nag-drive tayo, um, alam natin gamitin ang manibela, alam natin gamitin yung gas at pedal. Kung baga sabay-sabay yun. But, when they were taught, those skills or those things were taught to us, pa isa-isa. Like lesson one, manibela and gas lang. Diba? Yun. So, ganun din sa reading. Think of it as one big skill that's composed of different skills. So, uh, and these skills need to be taught explicitly one at a time. Especially doon sa mga skills sa tingin nyo, 
yun yung kulang or nahihirapan yung kid. So, these are the skills that um, according to research or help or research are helpful in um, teaching kids uh, understand or comprehend. Okay? So, very quickly, um, we have making connections. This is um, banking on their background knowledge all the time. Uh, visualizing, this is the ability to imagine things, make pictures in their heads. Okay, so a lot, um, a lot of, or not a lot, um, it's said that kids with, or children with autism have difficulty putting or doing this, making mental pictures. And if they are able to, um, it's not one big picture. So, hiwa-hiwalay. Another one that's important to teach is locating antecedent events. What's this? Um, this is essentially your cause and effect. Kailangan malaman ng kid na nangyari to dahil dito. O, na, o dahil dito, nangyari to. Yung connection ng mga events. So, they're not, again, it's about putting things together. Okay, and then next one, reference, locating reference. These are our important things or important words, important ideas in a text. So they need to be taught to, to determine. Ano yung importante? Like yung on ba, yung the? Yun ba yung importante? Sabi na basa? Diyan ba ako magpo-focus? Um, next one, rereading to repair understanding. So tayo, pag di natin naintindihan, what do we do? We read again. Or we just let it go. <laughs> we go to the next page. Ganon. So it's a skill also. Okay? So answering questions. Um, this is, this, this comes after naman. Um, the kids also need to be taught how to answer questions. So it's not expected na binasa, uh, masasagot niya kagad. And what? it yes. not out reading. Sorry to interrupt, Teacher Glenda. They should be taught to answer questions outside of the reading activity. So you don't teach them to answer questions within the reading activity. Yes. If you think that your child cannot answer the question because she doesn't know how to answer what or where or who, then we will not do it in a reading activity. We do it outside first. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So separate. So, so separate check. Kaya explicit. Lahat to separate. So you don't expect to... Um, uh, for the kids to be able to do this right away when you're reading a text. Then the last one is retelling or summarizing. Okay, so there's so many, so many other skills. We just kind of selected the most important ones that we think, uh, yeah, the most, the ones that we think are most important. So how do we do this? So, ano yung sabi ng teaching skills explicitly? So, Ibig sabihin nito, um, you need to break down the skill into steps. Para ka nag-task analyze, but in a reading skill. So, for example, visualizing. What are the things that you need to do to be able to visualize? Yun yung kailangan ipakita sa bata at yun yung kailangan ipractice ng ipractice. For them to have that skill. So, yun. Um, I mentioned step by step. So, either you, for modeling, so your explicit instruction begins with modeling. And with that, you show. You exactly show. Para nga sa task analysis, di ba? Either dinedirect mo sila or conversational. Parang think aloud. Hmm, I think... Um, hindi ko naintindihan tong word sentence na to, kailangan ko siyang i-drawing. I-drawing ko nga siya para maintindihan ko. Yun. Tapos, yun. And that goes for all of the skills. You need to be able to break them down and show those steps to the kids. Yeah. Teacher Glenn, so meron, meron tayong question dito. So, di ba sinabi mo maraming mga steps na okay, pwedeng i-chunk talaga to put into chunks ang reading, ano? So, yung question is, can we say that a child is dyslexic or has dyslexia? 
at at one point should we suspect or as teachers or as parents na ah okay baka may may learning disorder na pala yung anak ko. Okay. Well, I think si Dr. P can best answer that. Ano <laughs> 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 you know, like sa akin? Oh, parang si ba <laughs> question ko. Oo, oh, 'di ba parang sinabi mo yung itong mga skills na to, kailangan ba nakikita ko muna lahat nito before oy, may red flag na ako. Or pwede bang earlier pa lang? Or halimbawa kay teacher Kat, halimbawa will children with speech delay uh, parang present or, or is this a risk factor for dyslexia or a learning disorder later on? Para binabalik ko sa inyo yung tanong. <laughs> okay. So usually, um, kids who have difficulty processing sounds um, may have difficulty in decoding and encoding. So essentially, um, one of the things that we can look out for is doon pala. Yung sa okay. first step, which is phonological awareness. Yun. Um, so it doesn't necessarily... So pwede, ang galing magsalitaan ng bata, um, maganda yung vocabulary niya, but then... Um, pag, kapag, sound, kapag sounds na, kapag print na, nahihirapan siya. So, parang may disconnect. Mm-hmm. Baka sa so, that. <laughs> well, I will sure. always look at, ano, I will always look at receptive first. So, I will ask him, like, if we're doing sound specifically, if I'm going to teach reading, I'm going to do, like, um, where's, t- so, I'm going to introduce it receptively rather than expressively, like, I present him a T, and then I'm expecting him to do that. Because if he can tell me what letter produces this sound, then we know that he can perceive it, that we know that he can know it. And then, of course, in terms of putting it together, you, there will be recognition. He does, because it's a different skill when you have to say it and having processes right? that you have to go mm-hmm. through. Whereas you provide the stimulus, and then he identify which one it is. That's a different skill as well. And it, takes away his ability to produce the sound. So I will look at those things before I say that the child will have um, articulation or reading difficulties. Because um, production lang, but he can read, but he has difficulty reading, that's, that's totally different things. Siguro idadagdag ko lang, marami kasi nagtatanong about yung sa reversals, kung, bag, kung nag-reversal daw ba, dyslexic na. Yes. Um, so, um, typical naman yung reversals. Mm-hmm. And, and especially until um, they're so used and familiar. Okay? So, it's not necessarily, oh, nagbabaliktad ako, baka dyslexic na. There's so many factors nga involved in in telling whether a kid has this action. Um, yeah, so maybe I can just answer just one more question from last week then, asking about some related to language and comprehension. Um, it's about, uh, the question was about whether um, kapag nag, kapag nakaka, or hindi ba nakakaintindi sa English, does that mean my comprehension difficulty? So, um, not necessarily because pwede naman kasi nakakaintindi siya sa Filipino. So, it's not necessarily a comprehension. Yun nga, hindi siya necessary comprehension. Pwede, hindi lang siya familiar with English. Yun. So, that's one of the questions that we had. Yeah, in terms of grammar din kasi, the grammar in Filipino and grammar in English is different. So, chances are, if you're coming for, from Filipino, in the Filipino language that you transfer to English, you'll have to make sure that he will know the components and the grammatical components as well before you can um, parang, uh, diagnose or see or uh, confirm if it's a comprehension or not, comprehension difficulty or not. So Dr. That, yes. sorry. Yes. May I ask one question here? Because I yeah, I want to answer this one. It's it was in the chat box. 
So can a child on spectrum with apraxia be able to articulate clearly? We don't know for sure. It depends on the exercises that you're going to do with him. It depends on your, um, yeah, how frequently that you do this because with apraxia, it's motor memory. So you have to do it frequently. And then what if the speech pathologist advises the teaching articulation should be stopped and introduce another way of communication? Does it mean that the case is hopeless? Not necessarily. What I would always encourage you to go for communication because in the end, that is what we're after. We want our child to communicate. I am advocating for that all the time. But this may also help your child be encouraged to speak more. Because if he's already talking, and difficult yun lang is apraksha, when he is communicating already using a board or an AAC device because he's having difficulty, then he might be encouraged. He might not be able to talk as fast as us or as fluent as us. But if he can get those ideas across on his own without the use of device, that's good. So we, we're always working for that. But we encourage, I would always encourage you to build up on the communication because your child needs it. Let us not put communication down or you know put it in the backbone because we just want to have the articulation in. Go for the AAC, build on your communicative language, and then work on your articulation or apraxic difficulties on the side. Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay, nasing, nasingitan ako ni Teacher Kat. Nakita niyo po talaga yung passion ni Teacher Kat about communication. Teacher Kat is actually in our med mom classroom. Meron po siyang class doon na tawag natin ay Getting Kids to Talk. So, yon. <laughs> so, balik tayo kay Teacher Glenda para maklose na natin yung session natin tonight. May isa ka pa bang slide? Um, yes, it's actually more on accommodations. Like things we can consider whenever we're handling our, or we have, we're, we're teaching, we're having classes. So okay. it's important to set routines and have schedules for the kids. Um, also to include brain and movement breaks. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So when reading, actually when doing any activity, I'm not strict about them having to sit down because that's not my goal. Um, they can stand up all the time. They can march while they're reading as long mm -hmm. as they're able to focus. Um, in terms of managing texts, uh, we don't need to give everything right away. Uh, check how much the kid can, can process at a time and it could be a few sentences at a time, then do that. Don't mag start. Um, also, and I'm going to tell you about um, recall. So you can always practice retrieval through different strategies like um, asking them to retell again, to repeat. Yeah, having different um, um, mnemonics and visual visual cues. Yeah, yeah so that's it. Okay. <laughs> yes. Ako, napaka, napaka rich yung discussion. Sisingit pa si Teacher Kat. O oh, sige nga. Huling hira, Teacher Kat. Huling. Sorry, um, include the brain move or movement break. Some some teachers, some parents, and um, yeah, maybe interventionists as well are so hard on their kids when it comes to movement. But we have to remember that for some of our kids, they need the movement. So if they're fidgeting on their chair or they're rocking, it's fine. So long as they're getting the work done, let's not be strong. Let's not be so hard on their kids when. I'm asking them to sit properly and listen and do their work because sometimes the focus becomes on the um ang nagiging focus ng mga bata is on the sitting properly and on the sitting still. So hindi na sila nakakapagbasa, di ba? Whereas if you um allow him to do that movement because his body needs it, then he will be able to focus on your words more on on your task more. Okay, doc, I am done. <laughs> Tamang tama yan. Swag segue natin kasi yung next session natin next week is about behavior naman. So magandang nasingit mo yan, teacher Kat. <laughs> Yes. Ang, ang, ang dami nating audience ngayong gabi, ah, galing kay Dapawan, Laguna, Pampanga, Davao Oriental, meron sa NCR, sa Pasig, sa Marikina. Uh, good evening po sa inyong lahat. Pero I'm sorry to say, we have to end our webinar tonight. Natutuwa ako, napaka-rich ng discussion natin. And we would like to thank our experts, si Teacher Glenda, si Teacher Kat, for imparting their knowledge tonight. Siguro, um, takeaway points, Teacher Glenda. Hmm. I think similar to, um, to last week, 
uh, nag-stick kasi sa akin yung whether, uh, what if the kid is already 10 years old, 8 years old, adolescent, di ba? Kung paano tuturon or paano kung, uh, it, late na. Uh, I still, I would still say uh, uh, for you to teach, for, to te- for you to go back to the foundational skills and still teach the kid. Kasi even if that's, if, even if the kid is already 18 years old, he or she has so many years to go. And reading is such a valuable skill um, for survival and even for enjoyment. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Teacher Glenn. How about Teacher Kat? <laughs> Keep it fun. Well, like, Keep it the same. Keep it fun. Ayoko na magdagdag. <laughs> <laughs> Madami na yung nasabi si Teacher Kat, pero keep it fun yan. Okay, fun. kailangan fun, no? learning. Learning is fun then. Okay, so maraming maraming salamat po sa ating audience for joining us tonight, for joining our experts. Um, remind ko lang po, for those who need certificates, um, now the the you can now click on that link sa ating Facebook page para makuha ang certificate. Open lang po yung link natin from 8 o'clock to 8.30. So, on behalf of our experts tonight, maraming maraming salamat po. Thank you for joining us and keep safe everyone. Good night! Good night!